I absolutely love 2016. We got two movies from two comic book giants about famous superheroes that has differences of ideologies fighting each other. Now the question is, which one has done a better job? Thankfully, the international release has been a savior for all of us here who are watching in Indonesia. I mean, we won't let those pesky Americans to get a wider release for a movie called Captain Freaking America because that would be extremely ridiculous. I'm gonna make a bold statement and say even as a standalone movie, Captain America Civil War is still leagues better than Batman v Superman. This is a statement coming from a DC fanboy, and I'm gonna tell you why. know the basic story of Civil War. There's a Superhuman Regulation Act explained by General Ross because the Avengers' attempts on saving the world actually destroys the world in the process. Iron Man agrees, Captain America disagrees, they argue first, and then they fight later. The first 30 minutes of this movie has done a lot more than Batman v Superman. Let me tell you why. The movie actually shows people's suffering because of the Avengers. Not only that, they discuss it. What did Batman vs. Superman ever discuss? They never actually discuss anything, or at least relevant things. They just punch. They just put in more and more action scenes. That court scene where Superman has the right to defend himself? Yeah, that's actually a huge cop-out. A moment where they can have a meaningful discussion is always interrupted with boom boom sabotage. Batman v Superman doesn't work because Batman and Superman don't even talk to each other. Their ideologies are different, but there's no conflict because they don't even talk to each other. They need to share their differences of ideologies so that they can argue. We want to see them escalate their argument into punching, which the straight to DVD Dark Knight Returns animated movie did significantly better. Your live action multi-billion dollar movie has done a worse job than a standalone straight to DVD animated movie. How embarrassing can you get? Batman v Superman brawls like a bunch of angry immature kid for no reason, while Civil War talks. Before they come into the actual brawling, of course. Marvel actually let heroes with different ideologies to talk to each other and consider their points. This is how you do superheroes fighting each other. All of them are on the same side and they don't want to escalate it into fighting. So they talk to each other like rational human beings first. We want to see how their arguments escalate into fighting. That's something that I don't see in Batman v Superman. That is something that I see in Civil War. Marvel does this so much better twice. Everything you do out there in the streets, Red, it doesn't work. Did you know that? Oh, and what you're doing is better? What I do, I just do. It's out of necessity. You know you're not the only one, right? Who did you lose? Huh? Was it someone you loved? Well, boo-hoo. Let me tell you something, buddy. Everybody's lost someone. Doesn't mean you have to do this. Well, loss doesn't work the same for everybody, yeah, right? that's right. It's clearly not working for you. Well, maybe not. All of these scenes are only six minutes. Just six minutes. Nothing more. Nothing less. Six minutes of them just talking about their conflicting ideologies much better than Batman v Superman not talking to each other for two hours. It is so much better to actually see these characters with different ideologies interact to each other and either come off to an agreement or escalate it even further. What I freaking love about this movie is that the characters in both sides do not even try to fight to each other because they're friends and they're not supposed to fight each other. There's one scene in which Hawkeye and Black Widow fight each other and Black Widow stops in for a moment and asks him, are we still friends? That moment is so important because it shows how these characters are human. They're all human beings with realistic goals, realistic motivations, and they don't want to fight their friends. This is quite literally civil war.
This movie actually shows an even deeper degree to Captain America, probably in an even deeper degree than Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier went into character depths that I find genuinely surprising for a superhero movie, and Civil War takes this up into 11. Steve Rogers is Captain America, but deep down inside, he's still Steve Rogers. He's still human who can feel emotion. He would actually go as far as to ignore principles and the law to do what he thinks is right. Tony Stark also gets a huge development in this. This movie actually manages to both demonize him and sympathize him. Actually, this applies to both characters, but Tony Stark is the most noticeable one. Tony Stark is Iron Man, but like Steve Rogers, deep down, he is still Tony Stark. He's still an absolutely arrogant and emotional prick who uses his billionaire genius power and self-righteousness to save the world with his iron suit. And like Captain America, he would actually go beyond the moral event horizon to do what he thinks is right. The differences between the two opposing sides are only made stronger by their bizarrely similar traits, which makes them a lot more relatable in that way and make you the question which side would you pick? And yeah, both sides have strong arguments. Both sides are assholes, but both sides are also sympathetic. A lot of people have their doubts on Tom Holland as Spider-Man and I'm gonna make a controversial statement, but Tom Holland is better than Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Peter Parker in this movie actually look and act like a high school teenager, which for the record is Peter Parker. What I love about this movie is that the movie takes only as little as six minutes, just six minutes to develop all of these characters and make them to be more human. Vision and Scarlet Witch get some really good character development. Understandable because a little fun fact here, <laughs> they bang in the comics. I cannot write Spider-Man's introduction much better than this movie. Marvel did a bang up, spectacular job on reintroducing his character into the Marvel Universe. Ant-Man shows up in this movie and you don't even have to watch Ant-Man to see that he's freaking awesome. This fan-made poster is actually pretty hilarious in hindsight and I'm not gonna spoil it, but holy crap, I have a really good laughter with that. But in my opinion, despite the two main characters having great character development on their own, despite all the side characters having great moments with great character development themselves, the best character development in this movie has to go with T'Challa aka Black Panther. This movie can simply be renamed Black Panther, and it would still kick a lot of ass. This guy is a freaking behemoth. This guy is unstoppable. This is an amazing performance from Chadwick Bosman and a great debut for Black Panther. He actually has a character arc in this movie that is arguably a lot more depressing than the main protagonist. And the ending of his character arc is an absolutely envilicious moral message that was delivered in the most perfect and the most effective time. I have never seen a Marvel movie does moral message better than Captain America Civil War. Seriously, after the disappointment that is Batman v Superman, I cannot fanboy myself to this movie enough. It's one of the best Marvel movies that has ever been put on the spot. What I love is that this movie does everybody right. Nobody doesn't have a cool or an awesome moment. Everybody gets one, probably more. Captain America Civil War is an absolutely instant 5 star out of 5. It's a marvelous, marvelous movie that I am open to see more and more, my friends just to show them how awesome this movie is. Please, when this movie is released in North America, get out of the computer, buy a ticket, watch it. You don't even have to know the previous Marvel movies, just watch this movie and you'll be just fine. It's freaking awesome, go watch it. That's all for the absolutely embarrassing fanboyism today. If you like this, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.